Good morning. In place of the homily at today's Mass, we'll have a short show-and-tell instruction about what the priest does to prepare to celebrate Holy Mass, so that we may offer our prayers in union with him as he ascends Calvary to represent the sacrifice in the person of Christ the Head. We offer this catechesis as a way to understand better what we experience in the Mass. At the altar, the central focus of the liturgical action of the Mass is the altar of sacrifice where the sacrifice of redemption is renewed. Here, the bloody total self-gift of Jesus to his Father in the unity with the Holy Spirit on Golgotha is made present to us in an unbloody manner under the sac sacramental veils of bread and wine as we share the fruits of that one sacrifice in Holy Communion. Ordinarily, the altar is made of stone and has five crosses engraved on it, which represent the five wounds of our Lord on the cross. Today, the front of the altar, excuse me, towards the front of the altar, or in the pedestal of the altar, are buried the relics of saints and martyrs who gave their lives for Christ. In our altar, we had the relics of Saints Linus and Callistus, two of the successors of St. Peter as Pope, as well as St. Pius X and St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, our first American saints. On the top of the altar are three cloths, which recall the cloths on which our Lord was swathed in the manger in Bethlehem, the binding cloths which held him in the tomb and the cloth that was placed over his holy face in the sepulchre. The stone slab of the altar represents the anointing stone, and the altar itself is the tomb. Before an altar is set apart for divine worship, the bishop anoints it with sacred chrism and burns incense upon it to remind us that we are here to worship Christ, the anointed one and that our prayers rise to heaven as sweet perfume before the Lord. In union with the prayers of all the saints and angels in heaven who constantly minister at the throne of his grace. Also on top of the altar is found at its center an image of the crucified Lord to remind us that at mass we stand at Calvary. Six candles surround the cross all images of the light that comes from the resurrection so that the altar is ablaze with the light of glory. On solemnities and feasts, the altar may further be adorned with flowers or with relics of saints to add to the church a greater sense of joy. The candles are ordinarily beeswax and are an unbleached, excuse me, and are unbleached during the penitential seasons of Advent and Lent and bleached particularly when the Blessed Sacrament is exposed for adoration. The priest prepares for Mass. Whenever the priest goes to celebrate Mass, he prepares for prayer with prayer. He places himself in the presence of Almighty God and calls to mind a specific intention for which he is going to celebrate Mass. Although they are optional now, it was common for the priest to pray a number of psalms and prayers to remind him of the sacredness of this action and how unworthy he is to minister at the altar. When he is ready, he answers the sacristy in the room of preparations for sacred worship. He washes his hands and prays, Give strength to my hands, Lord, to wipe away all stains, so I may uh, be able to serve thee in purity of mind and body. The priest of the new covenant is the inheritor of the fulfillment of the sac sacrifices of the old law. And so he washes his hands before offering the sacrifice, just as Jewish priests and Levites performed purification rituals with water before their work offered on behalf of the people, which is the Greek word which is where, what the Greek word liturgy means. The priest is now in his black cassock, 
that ankle-length garment whose black color symbolizes death to the world. The Catholic cassock ordinarily has three buttons, down, uh, 33 buttons down the front, one for each one of the years our Lord spent on earth, and five buttons on the sleeve for each of the five wounds of Christ on the cross. The cassock is a reminder that the priest must put sin to death so that Christ can live through him. It can be replaced by a white cassock in tropical climates and is purple for bishops, the ancient sign of royal leadership, and scarlet for cardinals, for the call to martyrdom and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. The priest then puts on each of the sacred vestments the church prescribes for her sacred ministers when they celebrate Holy Mass. These vestments are the continuation of both Jewish and pagan ceremonial dress to underscore the continuity of Catholic worship with the liturgy of ancient Israel and a virtue of natural or, uh, religion. The inner vestments are ordinarily of linen, but also now often made in cotton or various blends. They are white to symbolize the purity of the baptized soul in Christ. Over them are the outer vestments specific to the day and are ordinarily of silk or some other precious material, as is befitting the dignity of our royal service to the King of Kings. These vestments come in colors which have been associated since ancient times with various aspects of Christian life. Green, during the ordinary time, after, after Epiphany and Pentecost, which indicates growth, just as so many living things in this world are green. Red is for the blood of martyrdom and the fire of the Holy Spirit come down upon the apostles at Pentecost. Purple is the ancient sign of both royalty but also penance as it comes close, <clears throat> as it is close to black, the color of mourning. The midway points of Advent and Lent, purple is muted to joyful rose, an expectation of the common feast of Christmas and Easter. White is the color of feasting and purity. For the greatest of solemnities and memorials of saints, it can be replaced with cloth of gold or silver. The first inner vestment the priest puts on is the Amis. He kisses the cross on it as a sign of reverence and places it momentarily over his head before resting it on his shoulders to pr protect the other vestments from his own sweat. It is fastened around with white or red ribbons and comes from the Lenten word am amicitus, which means to wrap around. As he dons this vestment, he prays that he may be protected from the assaults of the evil one, whose dominion has destroyed the re uh, was destroyed by the reality that the Mass commemorates. He prays, Lord, set this helmet of salvation upon my head to fend off the assaults of the devil. Over the almas, he places the alb, which comes from the Latin word alba, meaning white. It calls to mind the white garment which uh, we are clothed in baptism, where we are covered by Christ. Though our sins may be as scarlet they are now, now as white as snow. The alb comes from the Roman toga, a garment proper to scholars. It is appropriate for the priest to wear this garment as he is enlightened by sacred truth and commanded to teach it. The priest says, make me white, O Lord, and cleanse my heart, that being made white by the blood of the Lamb, I may deserve an eternal reward. The priest then gathers the vestments together with a braided cord of linen called the cincture, which is wrapped tightly around the priest's waist to remind him of the virtue of chastity. Gird me, O Lord, with thy cincture of purity, and quench in my heart the fire of concupiscence, that the virtue of continence and chastity may abide in me. The cincture can be white or colored. The priest then placed on his, uh, on his left wrist the maniple, the first of the outer vestments, the color of the day. The word man manipulum 
in Latin means sheaf or grain, or something carried in a small bundle. It is a remnant of a larger, more ancient vestment that included a handkerchief to wipe away sweat and tears from the priest's face at Mass. He prays, May I deserve, O Lord, to bear the maniple of weeping and sorrow, in order that I may joyfully reap the rewards of thy labor. It is a reminder that Christian life in this valley of tears is not our true home and can be a place of suffering, where the priest and the person of Christ must work hard to show souls beyond the cross to the resurrection. The next outer vestment is the stole, which comes from the royal symbol of authority. The stole is a symbol of the fact that the priest receives authority from the church to celebrate the sacraments, and is, in fact, worn in the celebration of all the sacraments. Traditionally, a priest would wear his stole crossed in front, and a bishop would wear his stole straight down. It's a sign that only the bishop has the fullness of the priesthood and that the ministry of the priest is limited by his obedience to the bishop. The Roman judges used the stole as a sign of authority, but the church employs it as a sign that the true law is that of grace and lived in obedience with the word of God. The priest kisses the cross embroidered upon it and prays, Lord, restore the stole of immortality, which I lost through the collusion of our first parents. And as unworthy as I am to approach thy sacred sacraments, <clears throat> thy, these sacred mysteries, may I yet gain eternal joy. The priest immediately puts on the largest and most conspicuous of the vestments, the chasm. The Latin word casula means little house and is like a shelter that covers the priest. The chasuble covers the stole and symbolizes charity which must cover all things, even authority. O Lord, who has said, my yoke is easy and my burden light, grant that I may so carry it as to merit thy grace. The priest co then covers his head with the bretta, the scholar's cap of old, which from its soft form has now hardened with three peaks symbolizing the most holy trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in whose name the Mass is true and perfect worship. When the people of God have gathered in the church for Mass, the acceptable time has drawn near. We leave behind Kronos, the changing of time and this world, and enter into Kairos, the timeless expanse of eternity, whose veil is drawn back just a little bit at every holy Mass. He bows to the cross in the sacristy, and the server rings the bell, the joyful sing signal to the faithful to rise and greet the Lord who comes in their midst to renew the Paschal mystery in the heart of the church. Mass is finally once again begun. At this point in time, Father Thomason is actually taking off his chasuble and his maniple as they are uh, vestments uh, particular to the Mass, since we will be having uh, the uh, 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 videoquam first. He shall uh, place upon himself the, uh, the coat. 